As a seasoned traveler and host of Rudy Max's World on Public Television, I believe one of the most important things you can do is to get good information about a destination, especially when it comes to finding great places to eat and drink. In the Twin Cities, Discover Delicious TV is a great source for where to dine, find a craft cocktail or beer, or just grab a quick bite from one of the city's incredible food trucks. We hope you enjoy watching Discover Delicious. Hi, I'm Leslie Miller, your host. This is Discover Delicious, a weekly TV show and online presence that celebrates all that the greater Minneapolis St. Paul area has to offer in dining, brewing, distilling, cooking, and all the great companies, products, and places that contribute to the experience. Each week, Discover Delicious will feature different aspects of the culinary and drink world in the Twin Cities, from restaurants to food trucks to breweries, distilleries, and wineries. And for the next several weeks, we will be following the Spire Credit Union food truck competition. We're glad you found us. Now, let's get started. Craving Eastern European with a modern twist over 70 vodkas and six variations of the Moscow Mule? Hammer and Sickle in Uptown is your destination. My name is Dustin House. I'm the general manager of Hammer and Sickle in Uptown Minneapolis. Our owner came to me and said, I've always wanted to do a vodka bar. I got this space and I want to name it Hammer and Sickle. Pretty much, you can figure out the rest. So being Minneapolis' vodka bar, we have over 70 different kinds of vodka, including six of our own house-made infusions. We really shine with our specialty cocktails here, particularly the Moscow Mule, which we have six different variations of. Definitely the Copper Cup is what Hammer and Sickle is known for. I'm sure if you talk to a lot of people that have been here, they probably had one or two. They have great Moscow Mules, good times, and a great staff. Hammer and Sickle really shines at night. When you come in when it's dark, you're gonna see a lot of reds, uh, a lot of grays. Our neon outside, our back bar, a few clocks on the wall, our lovely chalkboard over there where you can buy drinks for people in advance if you'd like. The place really comes to life at night. This is the best place to go on a Friday night. Good atmosphere. The atmosphere at Hammer and Sickle is cozy, fun, sexy, really makes you feel comfortable. I love their phenomenal menu. I love the, the fun and friendly staff. Our head executive chef of the company, Phil Dvorak, developed the food menu and did a fantastic job with putting a, a nice uptown friendly American twist on Eastern European food. Something different that really wasn't seen in this area. Stroganov is it's a steak and the potatoes and it's just done just absolutely perfectly. We have a fantastic food menu here at Hammer and Sickle with a variety of options. Like our neon outside says, we're known for vodka and we're known for pierogi. That doesn't limit us to a bunch of the other offerings that we have, including a numerous amount of small plate appetizers. Ah, uh, the pierogies are our favorite. We've also had the skewers and a bunch of other things. It's very good, Russian authentic, and it's Tastes great. Yeah, I would definitely recommend the food. The food's great. We make everything from scratch. We make everything in-house here. We focus on Eastern European cuisine uh, with an American twist to it. Fantastic rib sticking, hearty, stroganoff, Kiev, pierogi. Pierogis, can't go wrong with that. The traditional pierogi is boiled with a base of cheese and potato for a filling. Our American twist on the pierogi, it's a little more doughy and we actually cook it on a flat top. We do traditional style of fillings in the form of cheese and potato, but we also had a little bit of fun and had five other spin-offs. So three of our most popular offerings that we have in our food menu, one, definitely the beef stroganoff. This isn't your traditional frozen TV dinner stroganoff. You have your choice of it being served on mashed potatoes or spetzel, all homemade, and then a lovely mushroom cream sauce that we serve with it. It's fantastic, probably one of our best-selling large plate items that we have. I got the stroganoff, uh, best in town. The chicken Kiev gets served on a bed of mashed potatoes and a medley of vegetables. The third would probably be our comrade pierogi. Uh, that's probably our most popular pierogi. That's got more of your traditional filling to it. Food here is fantastic and it sells itself. The neighborhood's great. It's convenient to walk here and we have a great time here. I love the vibe in here. It's a great place to go and have a couple of drinks. Uptown's a very vibrant, fun, area. My son lives in Uptown. Come here and you can do so many things in Uptown. You can ride bike, you can hit the lake, you can go for walks. It's just a phenomenal neighborhood. Our clientele base uh, ranges anywhere from 
anywhere. <laughs> we really have people from all different ages, uh, all different areas of not only uptown, but also people from the suburbs that do come to have a night out, something different. We really have a, a wide mix of customers that really appreciate kind of what we're doing here and appreciate that we're kind of off the beaten path a little bit. I think they think that when they come here, it's kind of more of an adventure than it is your traditional you know, night out. If you're in the mood for something different, something kind of off the beaten path, uh, definitely come and try some of our fantastic food and cocktail offerings. You will not be disappointed if you come here to Hammer and Sickle. Spire Credit Union built a food truck to help build community. They are having a cook-off and the winning chef will get to use the food truck for an entire year. Spire is a financial institution. We have all the products and services that other financial institutions have, but our differentiation is about treating people the way I want to be treated, the way you want to be treated. And we want to call people by their name. They're not a number. They're not a transaction. It's all about a relationship. It's about improving lives because we care. You know, at Spire, one of the core values we talk about is our give back, our give back to our community. And we feel very strongly about being net givers in life. And one of the things we talk about is three T's, time, talent, treasures. We all have them. It's an opportunity for Spire to really utilize those three T's in really making our community stronger and helping the individuals out there. Spire is doing a food truck because it's a way that we can show an extension of our brand. It's an awesome, unique thing that we can do to connect with local communities in a different way than people have done it in the past. It's a unique chance to meet a lot of different individuals. It's a, it's a chance to help some people that are trying to get into a business to give them some education. It's a chance to see some different cultures, possibly. We're trying to get it out there. We're the best kept secret. We have members come in all the time and say, oh, I didn't know you did mortgages, or oh, I, I didn't know you had investment and retirement services. We have all that. Our core statement is driven by Midwestern values. That means treating others as you want to be treated. Spire really upholds Midwestern values like honesty, integrity, and hard work. You know, at Spire, we're really proud of our financial institution, our brand of banking, without a doubt. But really, at the end of the day, we're really proud about how we really improve lives day in and day out. We really want people of all ages and all walks of life, when they walk into a Spire, we want them to feel welcome and be comfortable trusting us with their finances, and we treat you that way. So you may have seen a little blue work truck driving around town. It's Archie, named after our founder of the credit union in 1934. It represents hard work and the values that drive Spire. You know, one of our core values out in the marketplace is to give back. So as a staff, we constantly talk about how are we giving back, how are we improving lives? Why a food truck for Spire? It's something that gives us an opportunity to give back. It's an opportunity for us to be seen out in the community as giving back is truly an important thing for us. So gentlemen, I'm really excited about this food truck contest. Tell me a little bit about it. Our three contestants will be showing up at CHS Field. At that point, they'll be placed into one of three concession stands. They'll have three hours to prepare two signature dishes. During this time, they're gonna be judged upon the timeliness, the quality and taste of their food, their interaction with the general public, and the overall presentation. The contestant who wins is gonna have complete use of the Spire food truck for the summer of 2017, so be looking for it in downtown St. Paul and Minneapolis. Yeah, and you know what, it's kinda of interesting, but we use the tagline driven by Midwestern values, and this food truck, we're driving it to Midwestern values, so we're really excited about really incorporating that value into this whole contest. This is gonna be a fun time, isn't it? I love it. Passionate about taste, committed to quality, uncompromising every step of the way. Dedicated to the finest ingredients available, this is Tattersall Distilling. I got into distilling, I guess it started with bartending, and then I started two other beverage companies. One day, uh, John came to visit me at a restaurant I used to work at, had some cocktails, saw that I was making everything behind the bar, said, all right, you've made everything behind the bar. Have you ever made the booze? Two of us got started and uh, went to the distilling school, and here we are. Dan and I have been friends since second grade. We took very different paths after school. The sexy story is the two of us got together and decided to start a distillery. The reality is, there was about a year of research, visiting many distilleries across the country, and we've been at it since spring of 2014. Distilling, for me, it's very, very pure. As a bartender, there's something that is so pure about being able to make the booze that you're actually going to be making a cocktail out of. We almost reverse engineer the boozes at times here, especially the liqueurs, with a cocktail in mind. 
and then we basically build the spirit around that cocktail. That's the fun R&D part. We're currently making about two dozen spirits and liqueurs. There's probably another dozen of them in various states of production. We're distributing just shy of 20 of them. The decision on what to make is really driven by the cocktail and what we think we need for the bar and what the public is really demanding. The cocktail we're making today is the Northside cocktail. That is uh, Akavit with uh, mint, lime, and a little bit of simple syrup. Something we make here with habanero bitters, but you can make it very easily at home. Without the habanero, you can just shake uh, a pepper in there with it, give it a little bit of added spice. Akavit is essentially a Scandinavian spirit. I call it Scandinavian gin. The botanicals that we use are gonna be caraway, so you get this kind of rye bread flavor, and then fennel, which gives you a softer licorice flavor. The process for making Akavit is gonna start with a corn base. We start with corn flour. It gets cooked down in our mash cooker. From there, we ferment it for approximately a week. What you're essentially making is a corn beer. Once the fermentation has ceased, we distill that in our big still, our 500 gallon wash still. From there, we'll take the alcohol content from about 8% up to around 55 to 60%. After we complete that, we'll distill it again. I've been a long time lover of Akabit, the earthiness of it. I think it, it plays a lot better with everything from citrus to botanicals to even like maple syrup. It's very malleable. Bennett Johnson told me his one prerequisite for working here is that we had to make Akabit. Tattersall is a destination micro distillery located in the historic Thorpe building on Central Avenue in Northeast Minneapolis. It's a little tricky to find the first time, but it kind of gives it a bit of that speakeasy feel. This building was built in 1903. During World War II, it housed General Mills Mechanical Division. We really tried to keep that natural aesthetic. You'll see the steel, the cement, the glass, just a perfect setting for a distillery. The barrels we have here are primarily what you're looking at is uh, whiskey barrels. Most of this is Minnesota oak that's charred. We do have some uh, French oak barrels that we age, our barrel aged gin also the uh, Akavit, and also uh, an apple brandy. Cocktail rooms open Wednesday through Saturday. We have the best staff in town, an extensive cocktail menu, over 45 drinks on the menu. We pride ourselves on hospitality. We invite everybody to come on in, try a drink, go for a tour on Saturdays, and you can also find us in liquor stores, bars and restaurants across the state and now in South Dakota and Wisconsin as well. Rum is probably my favorite spirit. Extremely versatile, there's a lot of different types of it. You know, think of, uh, think of wine, how many different types of varietals there are. Rum is very unique in that aspect that there's a lot of different styles of rum. The number one thing that sets Saturday all apart, the most obvious, is just the breadth of our portfolio. What I really think that sets us apart more so is just the quality of the spirits. It is totally driven by passion. We work hard, we play hard. We absolutely love what we do here and we're not gonna stop. It's something I'm very passionate about, something I love, and so it doesn't, the old phrase, it doesn't feel like work. I mean, it really doesn't. We, we love what we're doing here. We take a lot of pride in what we do, and we hope that shows in the product and that we're putting out there. We hope people enjoy it. Hi, Dan Stoltz here with Spire. We're gonna hang out with Aldi today. What kind of products and services would you say you use? You know, I feel like my whole wallet's filled with Spire cards. My business is at Spire, my personal is at Spire. When I was opening my business, I didn't even shop around for banks, and we just went right to Spire. I have a branch that's by my office, and then I have a branch that's by my house. So no matter where I'm at or where I'm going, I know that I'm on the way to Aspire at some point. They've always treated myself and my family right. St. Paul's first craft brewery to open on the west side of St. Paul, just a stone's throw from the Wabasha Caves. Wabasha Brewing Company is brewing some fantastic craft beer. Hi, I'm Chris Colby with Wabasha Brewing Company, CEO and co-founder. We are located at 429 Wabasha Street South on the west side in St. Paul. We are the first brewery since the York Brewery. It was the first brewery in Minnesota, very close to this location. There isn't a local brewery down here from what I know, and it's great to have one a couple blocks away from my house. We got started mostly because of friends and family. Brett got me doing the home brewing thing. Hi, I'm Brett Erickson, the head brewer here at Wabasha Brewing Company. I was just home brewing like everybody else, and then I just kind of started brewing with a neighbor who had a little bit more of a 
chemistry background. We ended up building kind of these elaborate systems. They had fully recirculating pumps and everything. Went a little above and beyond. I was kind of the guy that just made sure everything worked at the time and it just kind of ran around and got yelled at. Brett built a pretty nice elaborate system. So we started brewing on that and kind of playing with our recipes and bringing that home for our own consumption. Friends and family kept drinking and saying how great the beer was and that we should start brewing and selling and doing the whole thing. So we thought, okay, well, let's give it a try and that's where we're at now. My role here is quality control, recipe making, ordering grain. We get a lot of our hops from local growers as much as we can. A lot of people think that it's just glory days and we're just here making beer every single day and just drinking all day. You know, it's like the best thing in the world. But Truth be told, it's a lot of hard work. We usually start at about 5.30 in the morning. Then we mash in. I try and usually get two beers done in a day if I can. I really like the popper. In the tradition of the neighborhood, through some jalapeno, it adds a little bit of heritage to the West Side community. One of our most popular beers was our jalapeno cream ale, which is our West Side popper. We ended up doing that beer for Cinco de Mayo. It stuck, so now we just continue doing it. I'm Tiki Tischleiter of Wabasha Brewing Company. Right now you're looking at the Wabasha Brewing Company cooler, aka my office. I'm in charge of sales and distribution and whatever else the business asks of me. Right now we have our beer out in about 30 bars and around 30 liquor stores. Mostly locally here, we, we try to stay around St. Paul, a little bit in Minneapolis, and then we also have just a couple of offshoot accounts. Throughout the year we brew our four standard beers here, our Amber Ale, our Jalapeno Cream Ale, Red Desert IPA, and our Porter. Outside of that, we have seasonals throughout the year. We have one-offs. I mean, it's getting to that time of year where our, our cave stout's coming out. We've gotten the okay to age in the caves next door. There hasn't been any liquor stored in the Wabasha Caves since before Prohibition. Here at Wabasha, we brew and keg approximately 50 kegs every two weeks, and it takes two weeks for a batch to ferment. And we uniferment here at Wabasha. We don't have bright tanks here on site, so we just, once that beer is made and it hits that fermenter, it does not see the light of day until it hits your glass. Most of the kegs stay in-house and go into our lower tap room. We just opened our new tap room down on the main level at street level. So now we have a, a store front. It's a beautiful tap room. It turned out great. It had great bones. Because this was built as a tin shop, there's tin all over this building. That's the original tin ceiling. We have the original floors. We had those redone. We exposed the brick. The bar itself turned out absolutely gorgeous. All the wood trim to go along with it that really you know, brings the room together. We also built a new patio. There's a nice pergola over that. Eventually we're planning on uh, letting hops grow up over it. This is my first flight of beer ever and I really like the double implosion IPA. I really enjoy what I do and follow my passion and it's exciting. Here at Wabasha Brewing we're always trying to do uh, the most unique and uh, special beers. We really try to dedicate to the quality of the product and I think it shows and we'd really love you to come down and check out our new tap room and enjoy a pint or two. If you're hungry for tasty teppanyaki made from the freshest ingredients and cooked to order, head directly to the Hibachi Daruma food truck. Hi, my name is Ying Averitz and I'm uh, the owner of the Hibachi food truck in downtown Minneapolis. It's a family business. My husband and I are uh, putting a lot of work into it. My name is Miguel Alvarez. I'm the chef and owner of the Hibachi Daruma food truck. Everything fresh, simple. My husband and I met in a Japanese uh, hibachi restaurant in Minnesota. I started cooking in Japanese restaurants when I was in Mexico City. I was 16 years old. I really like it. I love the food, the presentation, the Japanese culture. So I decided to keep going. I see that uh, there's uh, food trucks around and I find a way to get my own truck. I decide to serve Japanese food on the streets. Thank you. Today we are prepping at our commercial kitchen and all our food is made from scratch. We will hand cut the onions, carrots, zucchini, all the vegetables, tenderize the beef, peel the shrimp, deveing it, and uh, cut the chicken. Fresh food is very important when daily eating. It always tastes better. <laughs> it has a much uh, better flavor. This is my favorite food truck of, of all of the trucks. I search it out. When, I, when they're down here, I will find them. It's fresh, 
It's awesome. I love it. It tastes great. I really love what I do, and I want people to, to have it. Get close to the people and bring the Japanese experience to them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The hibachi food is very popular. They, it's a flat grill and the people can sit around it and uh, I have a chef cooking in front of them and uh, they can see all the food that is, the way they cook, the seasoning, everything that is just right on the table and in front of the customer's eyes. So when, when we work in the restaurant, we see that people really love this type of food, but people have to sit on the table and usually has a longer wait. When we have the food truck idea, we know that we can bring the delicious kibachi food in a fast pace for the people that doesn't have time to sit around the table. Our teriyaki sauce is very important part of the food because we cook chicken and beef with teriyaki. So we make it uh, once a week. We use ketchup, we use sugar, we use Japanese rice wine, soy sauce, tonkatsu sauce, ginger and apples. Yeah, that's our secret. <laughs> All right. The food truck runs to downtown Minneapolis, but we also go other cities for special events. Usually we post uh, on Facebook and Twitter, so people know our location every morning. Our food truck also does catering service. They can have from chicken shrimp to filet and the lobster. It depends on people's budget. My dream is always have my own restaurant. We trying to open our own brick and mortar restaurant, hopefully very soon. I have a lot of ideas. We would like to bring more of the Isakaya experience to the customers. Perfect. Working in the food truck is a very amazing experience to see the customers reaction when they get the food and they look so happy. They follow us. I see faces twice or three times a week. That's uh, incredible for, for me. I really love to see our customers come back. Probably my favorite tofu of all time. They say we are one of the best food trucks in Minnesota, which uh, I really appreciate. Loaves and Fishes serves over 2,000 hungry people every day of the year. This is an inspiring story. Their mission is fresh, hot, nutritious meals for those in need. I'm Kathy Mays, Executive Director of Loaves and Fishes Minnesota. We have 24 locations and serve hot, nutritious meals to almost 2,000 people every day. I live close by in the neighborhood and I lost a job earlier this year. Loaves and Fishes began in the early 1980s when the county and states defunded the mental institutions and people went to the streets. So we became their answer for a free, hot meal. One of the reasons that we like to come to Loaves and Fishes is that it gives our, our people that we bring with us time for socializing. I like coming here Wednesday and Thursday. That's right. So today our focus is on nutritious food. We have farms where we grow our own fruits and vegetables and they come right to the table. Tonight you'll see watermelon. We're a volunteer-driven organization. With that said, we have about eight full-time staff and 20-some part-time that actually run the programs and make it happen. I'm gonna take these over and deliver them. We have a food truck that serves fresh food to people in shelter and anyone on the street. We have free markets where people can come and receive a box filled with fresh produce and um, sometimes some dairy and meats. Well, they've always had wonderful meals for us. It's a very comfortable, friendly, down-to-earth atmosphere. Everyone is welcome regardless of their um, financial situation. Nice bunch of people like you. <laughs> it's geared more toward community and fellowship and, and at the same time you get to eat. When you're older, you don't have the ability, you're not working, you're not getting out to communicate with other people, and this kind of makes a point for it. We made an impressive impact over the last three years. In 2013, we served about 250,000 meals. In 2016, we're slated to go over 500,000 meals. I have had a couple uh, rough periods of employment uh, trying to get another job and interviewing and 
Um, so this helps to the, for the budget, helps me to continue uh, to pay the mortgage. So our program was built on thousands and thousands of volunteers who came in as teams, whether they were from their church, a business, a Boy Scout organization, and they committed to one night a month at the site that they chose. They would buy the food, make the food, serve the food, and clean up. And most of them still do. It's how we were founded. That model is sustainable, but making the model larger, we didn't think was sustainable. So in the last three years, we have changed the model somewhat to open sites that have a chef or a cook who actually runs the kitchen. Our food comes from our food banks and areas where we can procure the food. They plan the menus and then we welcome volunteers to come and help us make the meals. We've gone from 5,000 volunteers three years ago to over 10,000. Always looking for more. It's easy to sign up online and get involved with us. We created the new hybrid where people can sign up online and come serve right along with a chef and still feed people and feel good about being a volunteer. It offers the ability for a new business to come in and sign up and just try it out. Um, find out how amazing it is to serve people here in Minnesota healthy, nutritious meals. Our work is based on partnerships. Whether we are partnering with an organization, a business, partnerships where they have a heart for our mission. Loaves and Fishes is proud of the work that we've done. We've fed many people. We've helped them in tough times. It's a help to us. We're 89 and 92 years old, so. We still have a lot to do, and that's gonna take donations, it's going to take people to volunteer right alongside us to make certain that no one is hungry in Minnesota. Hi, Dan Stoltz here, CEO of Spire. I'm going to see the whole Taylor family today. What kind of family is the Taylor family? On the go and active. So it's a family affair. All your kids have accounts? Everyone. All four of the kids. You know, I suppose if they had accounts for our pets, they'd have accounts too. You know, I work outside the home. We're a busy family. The online banking part has been what's really been helpful for me. What makes you stay at Spire? The values have never changed. That's important to me. I've been with Spire for so long, it's just second nature. That's it for this week. We would like to thank everyone for watching and we would like to thank those involved this week for welcoming us in and sharing their story. Tune in next week for another installment of the Spire Credit Union Food Truck Competition. We hope you enjoyed watching Discover Delicious. Join us each and every week as we bring you all things delicious. Whether you like restaurants and food trucks, craft beer, custom cocktails or great wine, Discover Delicious aims to bring it to you. In addition, we seek out shops, classes, and places to learn about cooking, brewing, winemaking, and more. We are here on WFTC My29 each Saturday at 11.30 a.m. And you can watch us four times a week on MCN Cable Channel 6. Check out each episode on our YouTube channel, website, and social media. Always remember to drink responsibly. From all of us, thank you for watching Discover Delicious. Mm -hmm.